a picture of a fed-up Prince Harry with Boris Johnson has resurfaced and been brutally mocked as the Prime Minister heads for No. 10's exit. Boris Johnson had faced a hurricane of MP and ministerial resignations this week that threatened to bring down his crumbling government and Conservative Party. The Prime Minister had desperately tried to defy his critics, insisting he had no intention of stepping down and even suggesting recently he was considering leading Britain into the 2030s. But on Thursday, he finally caved to the intense pressure and after a massive 59 MP and ministerial resignations, announced in a speech outside No. 10 he would be quitting. Now a hilarious picture of a fed-up looking Prince Harry in conversation with Mr. Johnson has resurfaced, and people have wasted no time in brutally mocking it. The picture, taken at the UK Africa Investment Summit in London on January 20, 2020 during an interaction between the pair, shows a bemused Harry watch on as the smiling Prime Minister stands in front of him with his arms outstretched. Royal family commentator Omid Scobie first tweeted the picture on that same day two and a half years ago, writing, just going to leave this picture here. Mr. Scobie reposted a screenshot of the tweet just hours after Mr. Johnson's resignation on Thursday, simply writing, LURL, which is another way of writing LOL. Twitter users wasted no time in mocking the picture, with Mary Frank, at Fran underscore Nina 20409, writing, a picture is indeed worth a pound billion. She accompanied this with two laughing emojis. Official Brazen Hussey, at Meghaven247, said, has his expression as all of us, while Kaina 3009, at Kaina3009, commented, Harry's face said it all. Twitter user A, at Sussex or nothing, I remember this photo lol. Harry was looking like this man is a clown. Christine, at KSK underscore Pamuk, added, look at the state of Boris though. How could anyone look at him with a straight face? Another picture of Harry and Boris from that event in January 2020 shows the Prime Minister with clenched fist in front of him, possibly preparing for a fist bump as a smiling Duke of Sussex stands with his hands by his side. A number of other pictures show the pair in deep conversation. The photo of Harry and Mr. Johnson was a rare one as members of the royal family and senior politicians are not often pictured interacting with each other in public. The Prime Minister was hosting the event in January 2020, where he and the Duke of Sussex had a 20-minute private catch-up, without aides present. It was one of Harry's last royal engagements before he stepped down as a working member of the royal family. Buckingham Palace also revealed at the time he had also met Saadadine Othmani, the Prime Minister of Morocco, Arthur Peter Muthrika, the President of Malawi, and Philippe Nusi, the President of Mozambique. These meetings came two days after the palace announced the terms of the so-called Megxit deal, agreed by the Sussexes and the Queen. It was stated that, while retaining their HRH style, Meghan Markle and Harry would no longer be able to use it after spring 2020. Other terms also saw the couple forbidden from taking part in any royal engagement or tour abroad on behalf of the Queen. The statement had read, as agreed in this new arrangement, they understand that they are required to step back from royal duties, including official military appointments. It took the resignation of nearly 60 members of his government, almost half the payroll, for Johnson to finally abandon his attempts to cling on to power. Even then, the Prime Minister insisted that he would continue as caretaker leader while the Conservative Party launches the process of choosing a successor. Some senior figures in his party say even that will be unsustainable, given the dwindling number of people willing to work for him. Others are already lining up to replace him. Party officials say they will announce the timetable for a leadership election by Monday. Speaking in front of the famous 10 Downing Street door, the same place where many of his predecessors delivered their own resignation address, Johnson announced that he would be stepping down without actually saying the words out loud. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore, a new Prime Minister, Johnson said. The process of choosing that new leader should begin now, he added, saying the timeline will be announced next week. In a sign that he is planning to stay in the office for as long as he can, Johnson announced he had appointed a new cabinet to serve, as I will, until a new leader is in place. Appointing new cabinet ministers means that the government can continue to function as he prepares to depart. Johnson spoke of his attempts to stay on as leader and how painful it is for him to step down, but made no mention of the scandals that have proved his political downfall. In the last few days, I've tried to persuade my colleagues that it would be eccentric to change governments when we're delivering so much. And when the economic scene is so difficult domestically and internationally, Johnson said. I regret not to have been successful in those arguments, and of course, it's painful not to be able to see through so many ideas and projects myself," he said, adding that he's proud of getting Brexit done and leading the West in standing up to Putin's aggression in Ukraine. Johnson went on to address voters directly, 
expressing sadness at stepping down after nearly three years. To you, the British public, I know that there will be many people who are relieved and, perhaps, quite a few will also be disappointed, he said. And I want you to know how sad I am to be giving up the best job in the world, but them's the breaks. Johnson has in recent months been engulfed in a series of scandals that forced even his most stalwart supporters to abandon him. The latest was Downing Street's botched handling of the resignation by Johnson's former deputy chief whip.